Here's a question for you. What is the limit as x approaches 0 of the expression 4 raised to the 3x minus 3 raised to the 4x divided by x? Feel free to take a minute if you want to try this problem yourself. So we could start with direct substitution. Let's replace x with 0. 3 times 0 is 0, and 4 times 0 is 0. Now what is 4 raised to the 0 power? Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So 4 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 0 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And 0 divided by 0, we really don't know what that is. That could be 0, it could be infinity, it could be 5, it could be negative 8. We just don't know. So this is called indeterminate. We can't determine what it is. Now, whenever you have one of the indeterminate types, such as 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, and when you're dealing with limits, you could use something called L'Hopital's rule or L'Hopital's rule. And what you need to do in order to apply L'Hopital's rule is you need to take the derivative of the numerator and of the denominator separately. You're not using the chain rule or I mean, I meant to say the quotient rule. You're not using that here. You just need to differentiate the numerator of the fraction and the denominator of the fraction separately. So what is the derivative of 4 raised to the 3x? To find the derivative of a constant raised to a variable, let's say a to the u, it's equal to the same thing, a to the u times the derivative of the exponent, u prime, times the natural log of the constant a. So the derivative of 4 to the 3x is going to be 4 to the 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is 3, times the natural log of 4. Likewise, the derivative of 3 to the 4x is going to be the same thing, 3 to the 4x, times the derivative of the exponent 4x, which is 4, times the natural log of the base which is ln 3. And then the derivative of x is 1. Now I need to rewrite my limit expression. So we still have the limit as x approaches 0. And now at this point, we could use direct substitution because we're not going to get 0 over 0 anymore. So replacing x with 0, we're going to have 4 raised to the 0 power times 3 times ln 4 minus 3 raised to the 0 power times 4 times ln 3. And divided by 1 is the same thing as the expression that we currently have. So 4 to the 0 power is 1, leaving behind 3 ln 4. And 3 to the 0 power is 1. And so we get 4 ln 3. Now let's get the decimal value of these expressions. So 3 times the natural log of 4, that's 4.15888. Three zero eight three, and then four ln three. That's four point three nine four 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 nine one five five. So subtracting those two numbers, or simply just type in three ln four minus four ln three, gives us this result: negative point two three five five six six zero seven. So this is, I guess it's a rounded answer, but this is the exact answer if you want to leave it in that form. But that's how you can evaluate this exponential or this limit involving exponential expressions. Now let's make sure the work is correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute values into this expression. So as x approaches 0, let's see what's going to happen. Let's plug in a small number like 0.1. 4 raised to the 3 times 0.1 minus 3 raised to the 4 times 0.1 divided by 0.1. So I got 
negative 0.36129. Now let's try another one. Let's try 0 0.001. Let's see what happens as x get uh, very close to 1. So 4 raised to the 3 times 0 0.001, and then minus 3 raised to the 4 times that value, divided by 0 0.001. So for this, I got negative 0.23657, which is close. If you try an even closer number, you're going to get a more accurate result. So for this, I got negative 0.23657. Five, five, seven, six. So as you can see, as x gets closer and closer to 0, it's going to approach this answer, which means this answer is indeed correct. Now, let's try one more example. It's going to be similar to the previous example. So let's say we have the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus e raised to the negative x. And this is going to be divided by x. So for the sake of practice, feel free to try this problem based on uh, what we did in the last problem. So let's begin using direct substitution. We're going to have e to the 0 minus e to the negative 0, which is still 0, divided by 0. So e to the 0 is 1. And once again, we're going to get 0 over 0. So we have an indeterminate type. Thus, we need to use L'Hopital's rule. So let's take the derivative of the numerator and of the denominator. So what is the derivative of e to the x? So using this formula, the derivative of a to the u is going to be a to the u times u prime times ln a. So the derivative of e to the x, e is a constant, x is the variable, is going to be e to the x times the derivative of x, which is 1, times the natural log of e. The natural log of e is equal to 1. So all of that is simply equal to e to the x. The derivative of e to the negative x is going to be the same thing, e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1, times ln e. ln e is 1, so this just equals negative e to the negative x. So the derivative of e to the x is the same thing, e to the x, minus the derivative of e to the negative x, which is negative e to the negative x, all divided by 1. Now, the two negative signs can be canceled, so we could change that to a positive sign. And then at this point, we could use direct substitution. So it's e to the 0 plus e to the 0, or negative 0, divided by 1. e to the 0 is 1. So we have 1 plus 1 divided by 1, which is 2 over 1. So the answer is 2. So that is the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus e to the negative x over x. Now, to confirm our answer, let's plug in 0.1 for x. Let's see what we get. Using the original expression. So e to the 0 0.1 minus e to the negative 0.1 divided by 0.1. This is equal to 2.003335, which is very close to 2. So we don't have to try a smaller number like 0 0.01. This is good enough. But we can see that the answer is indeed 2. And so that's it for this video. So now you know how to find the limit of exponential functions. Now, for those of you who want other examples, like more videos on limits, let's say limits of inverse trig functions or um, rational functions or just other topics involving limits, 
I'm going to post some videos, I mean some links to those other videos in the description section below this video. So if you're interested in more problems, feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. And uh, that's it. So thanks again for watching this video and uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel.